story. Tonight, still on the payroll, a London, Ontario police officer convicted of crimes that caused a woman's death is still at work. Family and friends ask why. We are committed to the long-term inclusion and amplification of black voices and a more equitable industry for all. The 2020 Junos took place last night, and organizers promise they will be more inclusive of all cultures in the future. And there's a growing movement to remove the faces of American presidents from Mount Rushmore, which is on Great Sioux Nation territory. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to AP10 National News. Winnipeg police have released some new information regarding a violent robbery and attack that we first reported on yesterday. Dina Gott was robbed at gunpoint on June 18th in the city's west end. She was shot in the process but survived. Today, police released this surveillance image seen here of a person they say is of interest in the investigation. Police say the suspect appears to be a white male, 5'4 to 5'8 in height, with, a dark, with dark hair and a skinny build. He appears to be wearing light-colored shorts and a black hoodie. Anyone with information should get in touch with Winnipeg Police. The sentencing of an Alberta Mountie convicted of assaulting an Indigenous man in 2017 has been delayed. The assault was recorded on a security camera, warning here some may find the video triggering. Tamara Pimentel reports. Caught on a Slave Lake detachment security camera is RCMP Constable Licio Soros assaulting Vernon Laboucan of Whitefish Lake First Nation while in custody. The incident happened in 2017. But Soros was charged with one count of assault later on in 2019. He was later found guilty. Rory Ziv is Laboucan's lawyer. So when I watch the video, my reaction is, is one of disgust. And putting aside the racial issues that are currently ongoing, this is a case where we place our trust and our confidence in police officers. And when they do something like this, it is a serious breach of trust in the public's confidence. Soros was scheduled to be sentenced on Monday, June 29, but that has been delayed because Laboucan is currently in custody in Peace River for assault and second-degree murder charges of another individual. He couldn't attend the court date as he has COVID-19 symptoms and is in quarantine. I actually couldn't uh, believe what I was watching. My client didn't remember the incident, so he didn't tell me about the incident. The assault happened while Laboucan was intoxicated after throwing a sweatshirt at the constable. It was just by um, good fortune that we put the um, CD uh, that we did receive into a computer and, and watched uh, what happened. But there was, there was no reason for us to actually look into this because our client didn't relay to us what had happened. The RCMP says Soros, an eight-year RCMP veteran, has since transferred out of Slave Lake and that his duty is unchanged. My client doesn't wish uh, any ill will upon the officer, but we would uh, obviously uh, like to see a carefully and well-reasoned sentencing position by the judge. The sentencing has been delayed to July 15, 2020. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Calgary. The family of Deborah Lee Christjohn was joined by supporters over the weekend in a march to demand the suspension of a London, Ontario police officer found guilty of crimes related to her death. APTN's Elena McDougall has more. And I call on Chief of London Police to suspend Nicholas Dory. Cindy Christian is the sister of Deborah Lee Christian, who died after being transferred from London Police custody in 2016. On Sunday, June 28th, she was joined by over 100 supporters in a march to London Police Services to demand the suspension and firing of Nicholas Doring, a constable found guilty in relation to her death. Lacey Weeks organized the event. I know Deborah and I know her family. Um, she was actually a very lovely woman and the family is really frustrated and they needed someone 
to kind of make a little bit of noise and bring awareness to actually what's going on here. In November 2019, Constable Nicholas Storing was found guilty of criminal negligence causing death and failing to provide the necessaries of life to the late mother of 11 from Oneida of the Thames. During sentencing was supposed to be in January 2020, that was delayed to March, and it was delayed again due to COVID-19. There's still no word on when that sentencing will happen. Since then, Doring has remained employed by London Police. The Grand Chief of the Association of Iroquois and Allied Indians, Joel Abrams, says he knows the family and feels for their concerns. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of people get fired for saying just a one racist thing on social media. They're fired, you know, but uh, apparently you can be responsible for someone's death and you're fine as long as you're a police officer. So I think that just kind of speaks to the degree of change that's needed. In an email, the London Police Service said it could not comment on the matter as it remains before the courts and that a separate investigation into his alleged misconduct under the Police Services Act will take place when that concludes. Lisey Weeks said an apology from the service would help to begin healing. Being a police officer is hard, but if you're a police officer and you know that, you know, your, your co-worker has done something wrong and you're silent about it or complicit, you know, like, what does that say about you? Are you really there to help people? He was convicted of those crimes! Elena McDougall, London, Ontario. Well, as you've been hearing, there have been many accusations of violence towards Indigenous people by police recently. APTN spoke with NDP MP Mumalak Kakak about the issue. She says, she says body cameras could help, but new officers also need better training on the history of Indigenous peoples. Kakak says police violence is something that happens more than we know. People in Nunavut are afraid to come forward with their negative RCMP interactions. But often the only people that deal with people in crisis are the police themselves. I think there are so many things to talk about. And I think bottom line is RCMP don't have that accountability and transparency. And we also need to talk about all those other services that are so lacking in the territory. Mental health, social workers, somebody that needs is expressing suicidal ideation. An RCMP member is probably not the best person who comes in a uniform with a gun on their hip to approach an individual in distress. The University of Manitoba is coming under fire today. In a letter to the university, a group of chiefs and advocates is asking the university to retract a report they did on Senator Lynn Bayak. Bayak was suspended last year for posting racist letters online. The report is on the Indigenous sensitivity training Bayak took as part of her conditions to return to the Senate. The University of Manitoba designed and delivered the training to Bayak and then signed off on her completion. The letter by the group wants the university to rescind its assessment report. And they don't trust the training that was developed. There was no consultation whatsoever with the Manitoba leadership here on what was transpiring at the University of Manitoba in, in terms of this report, let alone, uh, you know, the Reconciliation Centre, for example, is located at the University of Manitoba. Did they reach out to them? Uh, we haven't heard that in, in any of this report. Still to come, a call for the faces on Mount Rushmore to be removed as President Donald Trump is set to visit. Stick around. Here's a look at Wednesday's weather forecast starting on the East Coast. 25 and showers for Halifax and Fredericton. 11 with rain in Nain. 12 and showers in Cartwright. Sunny and a high of 29 for Montreal. 32 under the sun in Val d'Or. 30 in Toronto with the sun out. Showers in 30 in Ottawa, 29 in Thunder Bay, 34 for Capus Casing, 12 with showers in Churchill, 25 in showers for God's Lake. Rain in 27 in Winnipeg, 25 with rain for Dauphin. Showers in 24 in Regina, 23 with rain in Saskatoon, 20 in Meadow Lake with showers, 
19, and Rain in the Rock. Welcome back. As people are demanding colonial images and statues be removed, the federal government is renaming a Coast Guard ship with the help of the Nova Scotia Mi'kmaq chiefs. The Canadian Coast Guard will rename the icebreaker Edward Cornwallis, and they're asking Mi'kmaq chiefs for suggestions. The announcement came today from Fisheries and Oceans Minister Bernadette Jordan. Edward Cornwallis, who founded Halifax in 1749, offered a bounty on the Mi'kmaq people. In 2018, the Cornwallis statue was removed from downtown Halifax. Chief Terry Paul, a member to First Nation, said removing the name is a step forward. You know, we don't feel that it's rewriting the, the history or erasing history, but in fact, it's acknowledging the horrific history of uh, injustice and inequality that took place in our country's past, some of which is still exist today. For many Americans, the Mount Rushmore National Memorial in the Black Hills is an inspiring destination, a shrine of democracy. But for the Great Sioux Nation, the faces carved into the sacred land is a reminder of a country that cannot keep a promise or treaty. Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe Chairman Harold Frazier is calling for the removal of the American presidents carved into the sacred hills. In a statement, Frazier said, Lakota, see the faces of the men who lied, cheated, and murdered innocent people whose only crime was living on the land they wanted to steal. The chairman's statement comes at a time where a global discussion is underway about monuments to former leaders. It also comes just days before U.S. President Donald Trump is set to visit Mount Rushmore. And South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem had a message to those she says threaten America's shrine of democracy, not on my watch. Noem says security will be in full force before and after the president leaves. Noam says the conversations underway right now about monuments are being directed by, quote, a radical movement committed to undoing our nation's history. Oh, Frazier, in his statement, said, we are the ones who live under the stare of those who have wronged us, while others have the privilege to look away and move on. As many as 7,500 people are expected to attend the Trump event at Mount Rushmore on July 3rd. In Ontario, chiefs and lawyers representing 21 First Nations held a press conference today to discuss a monumental advance in a century-old dispute. Dates have been determined to, or dates have been set to determine compensation and settle matters in the Robinson-Huron Treaty Annuities case, which saw 21 First Nations defend the spirit and intent of treaty negotiations and challenged failures of the provincial and federal crowns to increase the $4 payments while resource revenues went up in their territory. Out west in the number treaties that this could serve as a precedent and role model because our annuities haven't gone up uh, and knowing f since 1874 as well in, in the number treaty cases. So this is a huge victory for, for treaty First Nations across Canada. And the Crown, again, has obligations. The honour of the Crown is very key. And implementing the treaty according to the spirit and intent is very key. So this is a, a, a very major uh, victory going forward. A nearly four-year-long legal saga has come to an end for journalist Justin Brake. Earlier today, the Crown officially withdrew an outstanding criminal charge of mischief against Brake that arose during his coverage of the Muskrat Falls occupation in 2016. Last year, a Supreme Court judge dismissed civil proceedings against Brake. Brake, who now works for APTN, wrote on Twitter today, quote, The conclusion of this litigation vindicates my decision to follow land protectors and their supporters onto contested lands and report, an event of national significance and historical significance. An event that was and is clearly in the public's interest to be informed about. The legal victory and vindication is important, but the larger battle for press freedom is far from over. Police continue to restrict journalists' movement and access at Indigenous land protests, including in unceded Wet'suwet'en territory. 
Malice or misinterpretation? A question one Montreal man is asking. After receiving a contract to participate in an Indigenous-led government awareness campaign, one containing a French term unacceptable to First Nations living in Quebec. Lindsay Richardson explains. One, two, three, hey! He hails from Winnipeg, but Daybuy is well known on the Montreal scene, leading the charge at this 2018 sit-in against police ticketing. Or laying down bars through his music career. The COVID-19 pandemic had devastating consequences for people working in a gig economy. Daybuy says health concerns impacted his day job as an outreach worker. It's been challenging. I'm type 2 diabetic, so that puts me at a higher risk. So I essentially have been staying home. I've been able to work from home somewhat but not as much as I would like to. While the government released information in Indigenous languages throughout the pandemic, according to the Public Health Agency of Canada, a new all-Indigenous awareness campaign was meant to ensure that COVID-19 communications continue to represent the diversity of the Canadian population. An open casting call came as a pleasant surprise to Daybuy, who sent pictures and measurements, but stalled as he went to officially sign on. It was an immediate turnoff contract was titled Casting Sauvage, or Savage Casting. To First Nations in Quebec, Sauvage is a pejorative term. In French, it has other meanings. For example, most grocery stores carry Bleuret Sauvage, or wild blueberries. The agency says the expression is used for non-unionized talent and was misinterpreted. But Daybuy doesn't buy it. To French people, it may be wild, and like this is a normal term, but when dealing with Indigenous people, uh, the French population, regardless of how they use it, what context is harmless, they should know that that word should not be associated in any way with Indigenous people. After some consideration, Daybuy decided he couldn't comfortably participate, writing in an email, it's part of a much bigger problem that exists, and as harmless as it may seem, it really put me off, and I cannot act as though it didn't bother me. It was just a bad reminder of constantly having to put my feelings aside, in order to survive. Public Health Canada called the term used offensive and inappropriate. In the future, we will instruct any agency we work with to use the term open casting or audition public for any call-outs related to our contracts, they said in a statement to APTN. Daybuy hopes the lesson is learned and says sensitive times call for better reflection. I don't go out of my way to complain to people, you know. I don't go out of my way to cause problems. And it didn't sit well with me. The agency in question did not return APTN's request for comment by deadline. Lindsay Richardson, APTN National News, Montreal. Slightly delayed and looking much different, but the Juno Awards were handed out last night. Details on the winners coming up. Here's a look at the rest of Wednesday's weather forecast, picking back up in northern Alberta. Showers in 19 in Fort McMurray, High Level and Fort Chippewan. 23 under the sun in Medicine Hat, sunny and 17 in Lethbridge. 20 and showers for Vancouver, 19 and partly cloudy for Victoria. Showers in 18 in Fort Nelson, 14 with rain for Prince George. 16 in Old Crow, 21 in Watson Lake. 21 with showers for Yellowknife, 29 in Fort Simpson. 9 with rain for Saks Harbor, 19 in Colville Lake. 24 in Baker Lake, 25 for Chesterfield. 7 with rain in Resolute, 18 in Joe Haven. Welcome back. Movie stars Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively are donating $200,000 to a Nova Scotia university to help promote Indigenous women's leadership. The donation by the Hollywood couple will kickstart the Cody Institute at St. Francis Xavier University's goal of raising a million dollars for its International Center for Women's Leadership. The Institute is planning to expand its offering of programs across the country for First Nations, Métis and Inuit women. The 2020 Junos took place Monday night and like many award shows over the past couple of months they looked a little different. 
The production was supposed to take place in Saskatoon, but was cancelled due to COVID-19. Instead, the Junos teamed with CBC Music to stream the, enti the entire hour and a half show online. Brittany Hobson brings us the highlights. The online 2020 Juno special began with timely acknowledgements. As dialogue around systemic racism continues to be at the forefront of conversations, the awards recognized its own history of not offering space for black and indigenous artists. The very first ceremony took place back in 1970. And it took 15 years for soul artists and reggae artists to be included in the list of categories. The first rap recording Juno was awarded in 1991, and the first Indigenous Music Award was handed out in 1994. So it's kind of ironic how recent this long road has been. Juno's president and CEO, Alan Reed, admitted more needs to be done. We are committed to the long-term inclusion and amplification of black voices and a more equitable industry for all. We are working on an action plan with specific commitments that we will reveal this July. We must do better for our BIPOC members of the music community. And we welcome you to hold us accountable. Out of the 42 categories, three Indigenous artists took home prizes. And the Juno goes to, yes, Lee Harvey Osmond. Lee Harvey Osmond, also known as Tom Wilson, won for Contemporary Roots Album of the Year. The album Mohawk explores Wilson's discovery of his own Mohawk heritage. Cree and Métis artist Esque won for Music Video of the Year for her song Little Star. The song pays tribute to Tina Fontaine and Colton Bushy. Isque was also one of the artists to perform during the pre-recorded event. And the Juno goes to... Kaylee Cardinal. Congrats! Métis singer-songwriter Kaylee Cardinal took home the award for Indigenous Artist or Group of the Year presented by APTN. Cardinal won for her third album, Stories from a Downtown Apartment. And the Juno goes to. All right. Alessia Cara. Other notable winners include pop artist Alessia Cara, who took home three awards, including Album of the Year. Singer songwriter Sean Mendez won Artist of the Year and Single of the Year. While this year's awards look different because of the pandemic, organizers are hoping to celebrate in Toronto for the 2021 awards. Brittany Hobson, APTN National News. Always some interesting choices for winners at the Junos. That's your APTN National News for this Tuesday. For much more, visit our website, aptnnews.ca. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs>